So today I want to spend some time talking about Rebecca Jones, Governor DeSantis, and the pandemic in the state of Florida. If you're not familiar with Rebecca Jones, she is a data scientist and geographer who specializes in geographic information systems and the data used to track hurricanes, epidemiology, and climatology. She also has been responsible until May of 2020 for tracking the COVID-19 pandemic in Florida as a leading data scientist in the Florida Department of Health. Now, Rebecca Jones was fired in May of 2020, and Governor uh, Ron DeSantis of Florida ended up defending her firing uh, during the pandemic. The reason cited for her being fired by the Department of Health is that she was insubordinate. However, Jones made the claim that she got fired for refusing to manipulate data to support the state's reopening. Essentially, the claim that she is making is that the state of Florida, and probably Governor DeSantis, asked her to falsify information, probably the same type of information that Trump was putting out, in order to mandate the state to open. And she refused. And this led to her being fired. Now, her response to this was to start doing it on her own. In a very, very awesome and kind of brave fashion, she took the time and was like, I have the tools, I have the, you know, technology available, and I can use the similar type programs, and I can recreate this from my home. And so she ended up creating FloridaCovidAction.com where her ethical principles were, COVID action was founded on the principle that people have a right to know what's going on during a global pandemic. Reporting data fairly, completely, and transparently is of the utmost importance. We believe the public has a right to our data, which is why everything we publish is free for anyone to use. All we ask is that you cite Florida COVID action when using our data. So essentially, not only did she call Governor DeSantis out, she ended up creating a counterposition to the Florida Department of Health to show her own statistics and data. And in, unlike Florida, who was not making all the information public and the resources for the data public, she was and and has been since that point. Things took a turn on December 7th, however. On December 7th, Rebecca Jones who had been updating daily about the situation in COVID, tweeted the following. There will be no update today. At 8.30 a.m. this morning, state police came into my house and took all my hardware and tech. They were serving a warrant on my computer after Department of Health filed a complaint. They pointed a gun in my face. They pointed guns at my kids. Now I'm going to show this video. Content warning. This is going to be police going into somebody's home, guns brazen. Um, if that kind of thing bothers you, I am going to put a link in the description, a uh, timestamp, so you can just skip past the content. Consider yourself warned, and with that said, I'm going to go into it. Come outside. Outside. Who else is in the house, ma'am? My two children and my husband. Where's your husband? Calm down. down. Calm down. You want the children down? Calm them all down. Mr. Jones, come down the stairs. Now! Police, come down now! Sir, Bring my down the stairs! Why? My children! Oh, hang on, let me clear my house. He just pointed a gun at my children! Search warrant! So, as you saw in that clip, the amount that the police did wrong there is kind of ridiculous. First of all, they did not announce the war warrant when they first showed up at the door. This did not require the brandishing of firearms. This did not require people pulling out guns and pointing them up the stairs. And even though we don't see the children and her husband up there, there's every reason to believe they came to the top of the stairs after being shouted at and after hearing this kind of situation going on. 
and they waited till almost 20 seconds into the door after brandishing guns to even mention the fact that they had a search warrant. The proper way to handle this situation, if she was not being targeted, would have been to open the door. We have a search warrant. Here's the search warrant. You're allowed to read it. Then they come into your home. They proceed to search for the item and then they leave your home. They don't have to brandish a weapon if nobody's committing violence against them. They actively chose to do this. And I believe it was a tactic to intimidate and scare her. Like, they completely broke par protocol. And Rebecca Jones ended up going on to state, They took my phone and the computer I use every day to post the case numbers in Florida and school cases for the entire country. They took evidence of corruption at the state level. They claimed it was about a security breach. This was DeSantis. He sent the Gestapo. This is what happens to scientists who do their job honestly. This is what happens to people who speak truth to power. This, I tell, my, I tell them my husband and two children are upstairs. Then one of them draws his gun on my children. This is DeSantis's Florida. This is horrible, and I think her making the claim of Gestapo is actually not hyperbolic at all. When this ties back to her making the claim against the government, there's no reason not to suspect that this particular order was tied to DeSantis himself. Because she was putting out data that made DeSantis look like a fool. And make it obvious that he was lying to the state for political reasons in order to defend opening the state back up. And so the response to this particular situation has been very much in her favor. Uh, Twitter has been very much supporting her and she has been trying to get as much information out and getting herself back into the position of being able to put out data. And so she ended up retweeting on, or tweeting out on December 8th, the following information. Got new info tonight. The judge who signed the search order for my house was appointed by Governor DeSantis and sworn in less than a month before he signaled the warrant. In civil court. He's not even a criminal court justice judge. It was one of his first actions as a judge. If you needed any proof... This was coming from DeSantis directly. This is it. You have this judge who's a civil court judge who's used really practicing some un unusual judicial conduct, asking for a warrant for a criminal charge through a civil court and a judge that was appointed by DeSantis one month ago, and this is pretty much the judge's first action. If we take all that information at face value, which I, I honestly believe her, this makes it really look suspicious that she's specifically being targeted for this, for calling out all that information. To further back it up, you have um, this person here who was a commissioner and vice chair for the 12th Circuit Judicial Nominating Committee, who put out the following. I have been increasingly alarmed by governor, the governor's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I believe the policy of this state towards COVID is reckless and irresponsible. I remained in my position because health policy was unrelated to my job on the JNC. However, the recent events regarding public access to truthful data on the pandemic and the specific treatment of Rebecca Jones has made the issue now a legal one rather than just a medical one. I have followed the events uh, with Mrs. Jones, seen the quality with Miss Jones, seen the quality of her replacement, and reviewed the search warrant that led to her home being raided yesterday by multiple armed officer officers. Based on what I have seen and read, I find these actions unconscionable, unconscionable, even if the facts alleged are true, I would still call her a hero. I also find Mr. Piccolo's statements that the governor was unaware of the raid not credible. This is a member of the Judicial Nominating Committee coming out and saying that they do not believe that the governor was unaware of the raid. Furthermore, what was actually alleged against her 
and why her stuff was taken is because they claim that her IP address was connected to some sort of data breach that happened in the Department of Health where information was passed out for health officials in the Department of Health to be honest about COVID and that it was somehow tied to her, that she had somehow hacked into the system. This is after DeSantis literally made the claim that she didn't have the technological capability to create some of the systems that she very much was a part of creating and using all the time, the same systems that probably are being used to call him out on all of this. So the last tweet that I want to take a look at from Rebecca Jones is the following. She says, now that you're here, the COVID monitor will be updated with new co with a new computer soon. This is also posted on December 8th. So she's going to get right back in the swing of things. Imagine if the camera wasn't recording. Imagine if I weren't white. Imagine this for you because one day it might be. Turn rage into action. Retweet. I'll be back at work tomorrow. And I think this is important for a number of reasons. One, she's getting right back into it. This isn't going to stop her. She's not intimidated and she's going to keep going. And now she has more support. And more people need to check her out on Twitter, and more people really need to start following her website for data, especially if you're from Florida. Second of all, I don't want to imagine that situation if the camera wasn't recording. I don't know if the cops were aware that the camera was recording, but that recording is great evidence. And it sucks that we live in a reality where having to record your front door is that kind of like thing that we have to do. Not because of a break-in, but because the police might show up at your door and that one day might be you. I also want to give her a lot of credit for calling out the fact that her white privilege probably was a good reason for saving her life. If she had been black, that might not have gone nearly as well. And that was already a messed up situation. There was no reason for those officers to brandish firearms. You know, you, you look at all the stories from the past few years or past decade or past decades, you know, you go from Breonna Taylor and George Floyd all the way back to Amadou Diallo, and there's a rich history of cops just abusing their power to kill people of color in their own homes, in the streets, doesn't matter. So good on her for acknowledging her privilege in that situation. I agree. If you are someone who's enraged by this, retweet this information. Pass this information on to people. People should know about the kind of authoritarianism that people like uh, Governor um, DeSantis is putting out there. He's tied to the Trump administration. He's following Trump policies. There's no reason to think that type of authoritarianism isn't and proto-fascism isn't going to trickle down. You know, that's what the Republicans like, right? They like to, tr to have everything trickle down. So the fascism's doing the same thing. And so she'll be back at work the next day. Do you think, the, the question that pops into my mind is, do you think that they didn't know that she would just get all of her data back and she would jump right back into things? It makes me think that they're not targeting her. And an interview that she had done with um, Cuomo on CNN to uh, talk about this. She actually references the fact that the data that they took, the information they took, was not like all the laptops in the house. It was specifically the ones that would have contact information of people that she has been talking to from the State Department of Health. So she actually put out a warning to anybody that she's been in contact with and talking to that they are probably trying to target those people. They are using her information, her cell phone and her laptop and her emails probably to get at other people and to take them down and remove them from positions. This is a great abuse of police power. And this is also being done on the in the middle of a pandemic 
that has meant the death of so many people, and that blood is on DeSantis's hands, and she has the evidence to put that out there by denying cases, by playing it down, by putting the whole thing into a much weaker perspective. You can justify opening, and you can justify letting more people die. And DeSantis is responsible for that if everything that's being put out here is true. With that said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter down below in the description and also check out my Discord down there. We have a cool community and we'd love to have you there. With that said, my name is Anarchist Tara and I hope you enjoyed watching.